Once again, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. The workshop will begin very soon in just a few moments. Uh, the Border Crossings Project is presented by the Art Gallery of Mississauga and is generously funded by the Ontario Trillium Foundation through the GROW Grant, the Ontario Arts Council, and the City of Mississauga's Cultural Division. Borders are challenges faced physically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. They can both connect and divide, shared by the art of storytelling. Recognizing and sharing these border crossings allows us to understand and ourselves and each other differently. Instead of groups of people separated by arbitrary distinctions, we are all individuals who experience pivotal moments of change that shape the contours of the narratives of our lives. Come and explore these stories with us. Before we begin, we want to acknowledge the land on which we gather and which the region of Peel operates is part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. For thousands of years, indigenous peoples inhabited and cared for this land. In particular, we acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabeg, the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwe Chippewa peoples. That, is home, that land is home to the Métis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. I feel incredibly grateful to have the opportunity to live on this land, and I am all for the education, uh, the, the history of this land and the relationship between the Indigenous peoples here and the, the colonizing empire uh, that came. and. Uh, if you do want to learn more about this issue, there are a lot of incredible resources out there. One that I recommend is this book by Bob Joseph called 21 Things You May Not Know About the Indian Act, which uh, the Indian Act is a piece of legislation that was created over 200 years ago, and we're still following. Uh, there have been a few amendments, but it's still an act today, and you can just see how the Indigenous culture uh, was forced into assimilation. A lot of what we're seeing right now coming up with the, the bodies found at the res residential schools and the light being shed on um, what some of the, atroc the atrocities that have happened. Um, but a lot of work went into suppressing the culture. And so there's much to be learned there. I do encourage you to do some research if you are interested to learn some of the uh, true history of this land. Um, we're so grateful to have the opportunity to work today and uh, in doing so we give our respect to its first inhabitants. We continue to ex respect this land as we move forward with today's workshop. The workshop is being recorded to post to YouTube uh, for people who would like to watch this after. I'm going to launch a poll for a minute, so please, uh, if you don't mind, just uh, answer the poll and let us know where you're coming from, just so we can know who we're serving today. And with that said, I would be really happy and I'm really happy to introduce our facilitator today. We're super lucky and fortunate to have Jeanette Rocasio with us today. And Jeanette uh, has an artist statement that I'd love to share. It's, she says, at some point we felt intimidated to intent an art piece. My work is a constant trial of beginnings, hence my range of artwork. I have experimented with acrylic and watercolor painting, illustration, poor art, artificial moss frames, terrariums, cement planters, clay coasters, miniatures. Just wanted to show this was a, uh, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but this was a terrarium that she uh, showed me how to build. We had a little workshop, uh, super talented, an incredible musician as well, and just so, so talented. Um, but she goes on clay coasters, miniatures, DIY wall art that includes macrame. My inspiration comes from anywhere, including plants, music, self-reflection, other artists, and more. When I see something exciting or fascinating, I want to try it and preserve, persevere through the research process and practice to make it. Beginning each piece is a practice on its own. I hope that through my work, others can feel inspired to overcome doubt on attempting an art piece and feel proud of what they create. No matter how small the step, I'd love for them to celebrate the fact that they took that step, and that is fulfilling for me as an artist. Without any further ado, I am handing this over to Jeanette. Thank you so much, Jeanette. Thank you, so much. Thank you so much for having me, for the really warm introductions, and also uh, 
for just letting me be part of this really wonderful community initiative. Um, yep, my name is Jeanette Ricasio, and I want to say first off, I am no by no means someone that has been doing art for a very, very long time to, to sort of this level. I always consider myself a newbie or beginner in many ways to many things, but I also really like celebrating that step because the, sometimes the first step can be the most difficult. Um, so what I have here today is an example of the finished piece. Of, uh, of something that's really simple and more textured. And it's really a play on different varieties of moss that we can find in, in like art craft stores like Michael's or other craft stores. And there are really many different kinds of moss here. And, uh, and if you're following along, please do, because I think it'll be fun. And don't feel pressured if you don't want to. If, if I will just dem demonstrate everything. And if you find some inspiration and ideas, that's already going to make me happy. So <laughs> here's just the finished product of this, of this just textural type of uh, simple sort of, I guess you can say modern <laughs> in a way, like a really good decor for your home. And it has a hanging piece. And I really like recycling uh, these frames because there's so many frames that we find lying in the house and that we just don't know what to do, but maybe repurpose them into something that's inspiring to you. And this thing here actually has a pocket where I really love plants and I like to, uh, I have a couple of air plants. So then I would just put this in like that and it becomes like a living frame. And how cute is that? <laughs> and you can just hang it on the wall. And of course, if you want to, uh, if you want to water the air plant, just remove it, tuck any loose ends in because that's just the nature of the media and then put it back in when it dries. So uh, without further ado, I would like to demo like some of the uh, materials that I would be using. And a lot of these are pretty common materials that you could find uh, in any craft store. Um, my, my glue gun of choice is, uh, well, it is a glue gun. My glue of choice for today is this glue gun because it's very fast and handy. Some people would like to use this familiar beast right here, the E6000, but be careful when you use it. <laughs> I've had like really messy glue stories with these, so be careful. <laughs> and of course, like this is the other one, which is the Mod Podge Classic. And you can like, you could paint the entire, well, the frame is actually back here. You could print, paint the entire piece there and then start sticking like the plants on top or sorry, the moss on top but it does take some time to dry. So if you're working with Mod Podge today, you're gonna have to keep it on a flat surface uh, when you're putting doing your work. And then when you stick in some of these articles and these pieces, you'd have to get some, uh, uh, maybe something to prop it up and keep it there. But uh, today we're using glue gun because it's fast, quick, and good for this event right now. Um, and some of the other pieces here, we have a picture frame. And of course we have our moss. This looks like a mise en place. Like, I feel like I'm making something, cooking something. But here <laughs> are the different types. And this one, remind, I really like this because it reminds me of bird nests. So maybe we could do something with bird nests over there. And then over here, moss in all kinds of colors and, and textures. And when you look at the media in front of you, I would really like for you to basically uh, get inspired by the textures and uh, and don't be intimidated by them. They're there, they're not going anywhere. Um, they're there for you to, to feel, this one feels spongy. So like, you never know, like the different types of textures that you can really put on a frame and it just turns into something. A lot of the times when I'm doing this, there's minimal planning involved. <laughs> And you just sort of let the trust in the materials, let the material speak for itself. And, um, and I'm Filipino, so I really like to make these uh, moss projects that remind me of home. Like this one is a, uh, my friend gave this to me and it's a coral, like a type of coral. And I wanted to put this into the piece today. And we have different kinds of birds, but uh, my mom, this one is really meaningful to me because my mom finds these uh, really cute pieces from thrift stores. So we like to go there because you can reuse a lot of like materials that people have already discarded. And uh, here's another seashell from the Philippines. And I don't know where this one came from, but I, <laughs> it's an acorn and it's so cute. It's so small. Like if you remove this piece, it looks like it could be a hat. <laughs> so like, I don't know, like when sometimes when you look at it, it looks really cool. Like you can, you can do lots of wonderful things with it. And if you like crystals, I just brought these here just to show you the vast examples of what you can include. 
And I have a piece of thread here because sometimes if you have like a bigger air plant like this, this is like my Goliath. I love this one. I've had this for so long and this was a baby that just grew bigger. Then I would just like have glue like these two pieces here and sort of make a little nesting place for it. And then you have like these little wood chips thing that I bought from a, an outdoor type of market uh, from a local person that uh, chops wood and stuff. So I got these little, like a packet of these little discs from him. So I would like to now walk through, that was like the decorations. Oh, and here's another one that I made that's uh, based off of that frame. But these things I actually got from Dollarama. And uh, you can get a lot of these heart-shaped looking things, but you can do a lot. But this is an example of basically what you can make based off of what you're going to see soon. So now in the planning phase, okay, I'm going to use a really opaque pen so that you can see what I'm doing. And uh, for this, I have this, uh, I'm imagining this to be the frame. It just happens to be like the really good width. And I'll try and draw it as big as, as you can, but... In the Philippines, we sort of have a belief or it, it's really like a myth where uh, if you walk through like grassy plains and, and stuff and there are going to be unseen beings. And before we cross on these sort of untouched places, we like to say in Tagalog, tabi tabi po, which basically means excuse me to, uh, to basically acknowledge any unseen beings that are there. And it and it's almost like when we walk through the yard, we don't mean to destroy anything. We don't mean to basically trample on an unseen beings house and things like that. So this is sort of a bit of an homage to that to that belief. So in here, I'd like to just draw like a door. Right. And then that'll sort of be like what I would be painting into the frame. And I'm just showcasing as much materials as I can for this project in case you wanted to like take that as an inspiration. And with this door that I will be painting, this piece over here sort of looks like a, hmm, like this one can sort of be a ledge because of how straight that is. So it could, oh, there you go. So it looks like I'm gonna add this piece here and it's nothing neat. So you can start planning the process that you want on a piece of paper, as long as everything uh, you have is like in your head, you can sort of visualize it, let, just let it flow. And then this one looks like a, uh, yeah, this could sort of be a branch. Why not? Do you like my beautiful drawing of a branch? <laughs> So it's, it's not meant to be perfect, guys. It's not meant to be perfect. And then we have like a disc that I could use and bringing this thing here, looks like nest. So I'm gonna put nest on top and a bird. So I'm gonna do a little bird here and it sort of looks like a bird. There you go. And now what I plan to do with the rest of it, actually here, I could put, maybe put a string here and then an air plant will sit in there just really like laying it out and now i have like this all these textures to play with and in, with these when it comes to planning what moss to use for the page or for the frame i'm really not very specific on it but i do like to think about what stands out with, as a background for some of these things so let's say if this was like an air plant uh, that I want to showcase, maybe it would be muddled with this color, but I would just maybe break it up like this. But I never follow the plans when it comes to the moss that I make. So I just sort of, so I just sort of like make up some sort of pattern that I like, right? Maybe we can add some kind of moss here and then maybe we could do that and that. But that's the general idea. You can have a window, you can have a door, if you have other objects, uh, or if you don't have any of the paints or don't want to use any of the paints, feel free to just play around with texture. You, there isn't, there isn't a, a wrong way to do it, right? Like uh, if you just add, start adding things in, it'll just start to come naturally. So now I'd like to demo the painting piece with this in mind. And here we are. A lot of the times, like uh, uh, 
you can have like, a like I would definitely recommend acrylic because it binds with it and it dries quicker for this project. And of course it's glass. So it would definitely go well with the glass. And here's going to be, I'm just gonna put a dollop here. Ugh, there might be a big dollop. So, but that's okay. We're just like working this out right now. So I'll make this door shape, right? And good thing I put that much paint on it. And I don't need to make it super perfect. It's just like a half circle and painting it around like this and maybe gathering the paint in the middle so that it doesn't like pull over to the end for the most part. And when that dries later, maybe we can add more of like a door handle, but I'm gonna wait for that to dry. But that's like the main door piece over there. Where is my art towel? And I'm just gonna like, wash this paint off and like by the way like if anyone is here with that are familiar faces and know me thank you so much for coming out um and of course to the new faces already very proud of everybody for even joining taking the time in your day to do something possibly new so thank you and you have to be proud of yourself so we have the door and that'll dry at some point but now I want to get into the gluing process. So we have this piece here and this one, I'm trying to look for what's the best way to glue this. I would suggest to, if you have a structure, something like this that's heavier, glue those in first before the rest of the moss for sure. Uh, because like, and then you can sort of uh, put the moss around. Cause if you glued the moss on first and then this one, it would have lesser <laughs> leverage to hold. So definitely glue on like the bark and things first. So it looks like this is the flatter piece over here. So with my handy Danny glue gun, let's see. Let's play this out. That looks good. Okay, let's try. Let's try this. And I have to work fast because glue gun works fast. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, and then we're going to wait for a bit. Sorry, I sort of like covered that with my head, didn't I? <laughs> All I did was basically like glue the entire thing and then uh, and then paste it on here and I'm holding it on. I'm waiting for a bit because I'm scared. Okay, I'm going to let go of it now. Ha! It worked. It worked. Look at that. Hot glue gun. It works. So we now have a door. And we have a ledge, if it falls off, then I'll use later on when we're not filming like this stronger glue and wait. <laughs> but this is part of that process, right? Like you're you're going to do things. It doesn't have to be perfect in the beginning. And, and that's how I learned how to do this. I made so many mistakes before, but I was just, I was just, I just wanted to try it again. Just keep trying, keep trying. So the next part of this sort of interesting experiment would be this one. These ones I actually bought in an aquarium store. You can buy, you can find lots of really cool things in an aquarium store. And this is just a piece of driftwood uh, that's typically used in terrariums. And the same thing as this one, I got it in Mississauga greenhouses actually for a couple of cents. And so for this one, I am going to try gluing this together. I like how this looks like this, but you know, if you're just using this and you don't want to have a door, you can use your driftwood or other decor and, you know, make it like an, a statement. You can have like your nice grassy area. Where is this grassy area? Your nice grassy area right here. And then you can just like put that in there. How cool is that, right? Like it just makes it look cool and, and all like woodsy and naturey. Like you can, you, you can even paint this one if you wanted to, any color. The good thing about painting something yourself is if you don't like it, use it again and you can just paint on top of what you had. You know? <laughs> That's the thing that I love about that. Like just when, you, when you're able to DIY stuff. So look at that, it's nice, that's really nice. Or you can put this on the top like that and make it a hanging necklace thing, right? So many ideas, so many possibilities. You can make this little hanging thing for your jewelry. All right, that's how my brain works. It, <laughs> it thinks about things all the time. So, okay, for this, for the sake of this piece though, I'm gonna, I like it this way. So if I lay it down here, it looks like uh, it's going to be, these are the points that's, that's touching the glass right here. So I think I'm going to glue it on those areas. All right. Ugh. 
It makes me nervous when I run out of like the glue tops over here, but we'll go for it. Glue, glue, glue. And then, and then stick it. Stick, 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 stick. We wait. <laughs> and then we wait. <laughs> But as you can see, like this process is not like, it's not meant, it's not what you see on social media. It's not like uh, what you, what people make, like some people are really good at what they do for sure. But this is something that I like to do for fun, for, for myself, for, for development, just to try. And you guys are on this journey on me. If, you, if you're on that journey on me and you, you, you could be better than me already in this part. <laughs> okay, so this one, looks like it's sticking there you go there you go so i'll show it in like in this view we have something we have the base of something i'm just gonna see if this is wet still no that's definitely wet okay so next thing is this thing this wood chip all right so i think i'm trying to find like one that has like the flatter end because the thing I like about these is searching for the right materials. And if you sometimes see something on the beach and you you're like, I could use that. And that's what happened to these. I had sort of no idea what I needed to use these for. But then as you start to make things, it just starts to, you're just going to start to notice I have the thing for that. I don't know how I came up with that. It just, hap it just happened to look like that. So I'm going to take the flattest point and trying to see like which part is the flattest point that I could use. I think that something like that right there. That would look really cool, huh? So I'm going to, if it's going to touch that area, this part really glue this part. And then, and then we wait again. <laughs> that's, a, that's just the nature of the glue. There you go. But I hope like if uh, any, anyone else who's like uh, really following along this process, I'm really curious to see like what you all come up with because uh, I'm sure it'll be super cool. You have your own process. There is no like right or wrong way to do it. It's just thank you for taking the time out of your day, your busy day and, and just really like doing something right and doing and doing something creative. And I know that this class is just like an hour ish, but then don't let the hour stop you. You're, you're seeing me doing something in probably a hilarious way. Like this is really me when I'm experimenting in my parents' dining room, which I've turned into a studio. So, <laughs> so like making do, make do with the things that you have and reuse like a lot of materials and you'll be fine. There you go. What do you guys think? What does everybody think of this? Look at that. Oh, sorry, like playing with Daniel now with the spotlight. <laughs> Jumping back and forth with you. I'm, I'm wondering when you're out and about, or I mean, maybe post pre pandemic times, where you think, oh, maybe I could use that in an art project or something. Like, can you tell yeah. where did those birds come from? Did you say they were a gift to you, even? Or? Yeah, my mom. Like, so my mom knows that I'm into like arts and things like that. So when she goes like to the thrift store or in someone's garage store, like, you know, those garage sales, sometimes they have these baggies of uh, really random things. And I have a lot of that. And so like for this one, these happen to be like perfect for these things. And you can find these in, in, in a lot of like thrift stores. So, and that's really a lot of where the materials come from. They have been passed down. I, maybe these are older than me. <laughs> so who knows, right? And that makes it super cool. Each piece sort of has a story when you find it from the thrift store. And I find that so cool. Um, okay. Now we're gonna get into the let's get mossy sort of part of this project. Very corny, I know, but that's okay. Ooh, actually, before I forget, nah, maybe I can leave this part for later. This is where my plans of the moss is probably not going to be followed. But I have this thing here. Let me shift these over there so that it doesn't get covered by the moss. Okay, so these things here was left over from a, from a, uh, from a project that I was doing for a friend. And so, and I haven't used these in, in these in years, but this would have been like the perfect project for it. So this looks like a shadow, doesn't it? So I can add that in the bottom, sort of like a shadow. So why not? Why not? Let's use it. So, oh, I'm gonna get some glue sticks over here. 
load up my gun. <sighs> there you go, my glue stick gun. Okay, so what I do is I just sort of like to put the glue all over this uh, uh, in the spot, especially for hot glue gun, because uh, they dry really quickly. So you don't want to put glue around the area right away. Otherwise, you're just going to have lumps on the surface and you might need to peel it off if, if it uh, sort of like bothers what you're doing with your work. But I like to glue one spot and then paste, glue another spot, put in and paste. And if you're using Mod Podge, you're not really going to have that issue because it won't dry as fast. But definitely keep your uh, your uh, your frame on a flat surface area and for the structures have support and, and don't move them until like they're really fully dry. But let's try this now. And as you see, it's like crumbling everywhere, but that's just the nature of the media. It's fine. So we're going to do this now. Make sure you don't have as like crumb, crumbs of things as much as you can so it does, doesn't affect the sticking surface. Stick that there. And we're making moss art. Look at that, right? <laughs> okay, so now we're going, going to keep, I'm just going to keep going away at it. And we're making a nice little entrance. Well, I'm making a nice really entrance for the, the dwarves and elves. And, um, and yeah, like I was watching a new uh, TV show that came out of Netflix. And uh, it was talking about like the myths of, uh, of the different uh, the creatures that appear in the Philippines. And it was nice to watch it with my parents reconnect with like the beliefs and, and, and things like that. So he, and these are sort of like Filipino monsters and uh, in beliefs in the Philippines. And when I was watching the show with my parents, uh, they were, I, they had to, they had to pause many things because I missed so many references, but I was really like happy that they were able to walk me through what, what I missed and, and really help me understand my motherland much more. So yeah, this is like, this gnome house is looking pretty good. So that's going to be like the bottom part here and should glue all these things away. And now for, I like, look at this, this one I've reused from a terrarium. So that's why it has a little bit of that discoloration, but it looks really, ooh, ooh, what do you think of that? Looks really nice to like, it's almost like a shady cover up right there. So I'm gonna use that for this actually. That's really cool. But as you can see, that was, that was not part of the original plan, okay? The, the original plan for me was just like, as long as the base thing, the structure is there, I can work around that with moss. And that's the fun thing about moss is you don't have to be perfect at all. You just have to just uh, play around with it, paste things in there. there. I can paste it on the moss itself. Be careful, by the way, when you use hot glue gun because I'm sort of at this point where I'm now used to the burn <laughs> of hot glue gun, but it is very uncomfortable. So be careful with it. And just pressing that on and they got and they dry up really quickly. And now we're gonna get into this flow thing over here. I wanna put in the bird nest now. Why not? I'm going to look for uh, like a flatter piece. There is this, there's this. Let's see which one like looks nicer. Oh yeah, I can make a layer of them. So let's do that. Make a layer of these bird nest. So I'm going to do this, stick it on there. <sighs> I love glue gun because it's just like, oh, like I, I sort of, looks like Alice in Wonderland. Oh, I love that. I love that. You know, Alice in Wonderland like is a is a really like awesome trippy, like there are many versions of it, but I definitely like the whole mystical part of it. How like when you enter into a world, like there's, there's, uh, there, there's so many things that can happen and it's the journey. But yeah, like if you, if you love Alice in Wonderland, like that's really cool. And I hope that everyone can have like a really exciting journey and, and, and stuff like that. But my journey right now is through moss. This is my Alice in Wonderland right now. So many things can go wrong. I'm kidding. All right, so I'm gonna put this on the side here. And that looks like bird nest. We made a bird nest, everyone. It happened, it's possible. Okay, so now I think I wanna just like glue this piece a little closer to the edge so it closes it up. Finishing touches can come a little later. Hi, there's like, Ooh, look, threads can be spiderweb if you're into that <laughs> aesthetic with the hot glue gun, just make spiderwebs. But there you go, it's coming together. 
And I'm just waiting for this piece to dry so I can add a couple more details if you'd like. Uh, so the next one is maybe, see, I just have like a bunch of random moss. And so maybe I can put this here. Yeah, why not? I'm going to concentrate on having like greenery in this area now. So do that. Okay. And cover this. And if there are any spaces, you can cut, you can always come back and cover that later on. And we're just going to keep, <laughs> I like seeing these pieces where they're just like big like that. And you can cut them uh, if you, if you like to and cut them to shape, uh, but I, you know, you can just rip them off too. So that's fine. Let's see. Okay. That works out. Gluing these on. And you can always come back and put, put more put more glue. There you go. And we're just trekking away now. Really curious to see how everyone is is doing. But if you're not, that's okay too. Hopefully, like this inspires to uh, to to try any of what I'm showing, even if it's painting some kind of door. <laughs> For now. At first, I thought it was a tree next to a door and now it looks like a mushroom growing on a log. Yeah, now it looks like a mushroom. <laughs> See, like the plants, like sometimes they're just never meant to be followed, with, especially in this scenario, but that's okay. But you can see how it's coming together. Look at this. I'm just gluing it away now. And I'm not too fussed about like how it like goes over the frame. I personally think it adds to the charm. Uh, but if you're if you want to trim it, you certainly can after. And let's I'm gonna add more greenery here. So now we have the mushroom tree. <laughs> it really does. It really does look like some sort of mushroom, but it's in theme at least. Oh, yay! <laughs> it's in theme, like with the mushroom, uh, sort of mushroom kingdom. Okay, I have more of these here. And these look really nice, especially if you're into uh, into plants and things like that, or if you work in a in a place where it could use some greenery, but maybe you can't, uh, you don't have like a green thumb or or something like that. Then you can totally just have this and have your nature inspired corner. It looks really nice in the bookshelf as well. And let's see, let's see here. What else do we have in coloring? I have these neon pieces over here. So maybe I can add some neon in the, in the bottom and add some contrast, but yeah, you know what, let's try. Let's see what that looks like. Why not? So that everyone can see how everything just sort of morphs. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Wait, did my plan just change? <laughs> But like, I also want to highlight that. So maybe I'll think about that one later. I'll think about that one later. So I'll put glue here. All right. And maybe I can just trim that a little later. And we're just gonna keep covering things now. This is a really nice one. I like this one. Oh yeah, I really like this one. Yeah. But it's starting to look like something. And a lot of the times when I'm doing these for, for friends, for family, like as gifts, they're really nice as gifts. They're really nice if you want to, to do some activity. If, if you're into like those birthday crafts things like, like I am, <laughs> if you're into those, then these are, this is something that you could totally have do with friends and they can have, and these are, these are pretty, you can find these relatively easily, easily in craft stores too. So I want to go with the motif of go, doing the nice pink there. And these are items that I already had on hand, but you can get these in so many different colors. And I even made one that has like a shape before. You can even do like those portrait things. So uh, I made one with the Mickey Mouse on a canvas and it was, uh, and I just traced the outline with the, with the Mickey Mouse ears and everything. And then I just covered it in moss and I used these, this color as the pants. So you can use this as like, it's almost like painting a picture, but with moss, isn't that cool? I'm gonna put this in here. And I like it when it sort of just fits like a puzzle piece. Now for the string part, I want to add, I wanna add something like this. So I think I'm going to use this as a string and cut this. 
these jute looking strings are always super handy for any of these projects. So maybe like that. So I will just glue that the tips on. Uh, oh, need more glue gun, glue sticks, need more glue sticks. I'm gonna put that here and here. Probably the worst practice to do <laughs> like that, but here I am. <laughs> and use this to sort of stick it on. And it wasn't nothing, it wasn't perfect. And I, ow, but I'm used to it. Ah, I'm used to it, I'm used to it. Okay, so now that that's on there, I'm just gonna wait for that one. And I will start covering it up with more stuff. So I will cover this. I like the purple in this area, so I'm gonna continue on with the purple and just cover up the, the really interesting looking glue skilling over there. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this here and just glue, cover, cover that and removes like some of the webbing if you have, unless you want to keep the webbing but you know it's really it's really up to you there isn't a right, right or wrong way to do this all right so it's getting there we might be able to get this done in under an hour everyone <laughs> okay so we have like another hmm, let's see this thing that i can add yes oh no this piece gotcha and there it is. So yeah, when you're doing this, like the, there, I've also seen versions online where sometimes they would, uh, if you're using a picture frame, if you want it, you can also just put cover the moss in like the borders. And if you wanted to put an actual picture behind there, that's an idea. Another good idea would be like, um, uh, sometimes people like to have like these shadow boxes. So like an, a shadow box example would be these, and then you could have a, um, if you paint around it and you can have fairy light shining. So if you have like uh, paints, mix it with water a little, and then, so it's like translucent and the, and the light would shine through, that'll look really cool too. Or you can open this up and add, and add um, mossy, mossy items and make a mini world inside the shadow box. It's super cool. But once you like just, do it, you're going to come up with so many ways to to do and see what you like to do. So there now we have our little. There's one question coming in from the chat from Ivanka yeah. asking, what else can you use instead of a picture frame? You can totally use uh, like canvas. Like I've also experimented with canvas. Uh, so just something like this, like a plain canvas and, and you can have a smaller one so it's easier. And I find that as long as it has like a sturdy back and not not something that is quite flimsy, like as long as it has something to to lean on and and it's not going to fold everywhere, it should be fine. You can even use a wood plaque. So really, like any or even cardboard, like a really sturdy piece of cardboard, if you want to use that and and uh, and uh, and glue textures as the border and paint over them to make it seem like it's a textured border. You can use that too. So you can use absolutely anything um, as long as it's like more of a, like as long as it's sturdy and it's not flimsy. So I hope that answers your question because like uh, I, you can really do it on anything and just uh, even on cabinets. I want to try that. <laughs> I want to try it on cabinets. Like that's one of like the things I want to do is try to make furniture. I think I added a lot of purple right now. So let's move on to contrasting textures. This one here is really interesting because this one has like really straggly bits that maybe I can add like a bit over here so it doesn't seem very linear and has that, uh oh, it's on my sweater. It's on my sweater. All right, let's see. I can put it right here just so that it has something interesting. So it's not just very linear, right? So I'm going to glue that there. Let's see. So now it makes it seem like there's a shape. It's coming along. Looks pretty, pretty, really pretty. I like how it's coming along. I hope everyone is uh, is enjoying so far. Really curious to see what everyone has later on. And this one's also really cute. Ooh, look at that. Could be like a border for the door. So let's try that one. 
looks like a spruce tree a little. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put that there. Okay, and then now it's just really playing with textures at this point. And uh, this is where, like, this is honestly like how, why it's why I like to use the 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 fun mossy pun. It gets mossy, <laughs> but it is very mossy slash messy. So let's see. Just keep adding more textures. And usually like when I'm like doing this by myself, like I can really like sort of get in the zone, you know, like listen to all that, all the music to get in the zone and, and make something. But so far I'm really happy with the result. And I think it's cause everyone is joining, joining here today. So it makes me very happy that we can all sort of like find times in the day and, and do art together. And let's see this one. Hmm. Oh yeah, that looks nice there it's to cut that green area a bit more. So we can put this right there. And everything is just sort of getting piled up now. But it's going, it's coming along. And now let's add more of these neon green thingies. Ooh, I also have like a random blue one. <laughs> Look at that, I have a random blue one. I am going to use you somewhere. <laughs> it's a specialty, a special guest. There you go, buddy. You can stay there. There you go. Hope you're happy there now. You'll, you're gonna live there for a while. And now here are some of the, uh, hmm, hmm. Yeah, sure, why not? Did not follow the original plan, but that's okay. There you go. There you go. And we're getting pretty close to like being able to put on the other decorations. Ah, I like these ones. And sometimes when you see like folks selling like, you know, like those really elaborate looking paintings, this is really the beginnings of it. <laughs> this, this is really the beginnings of that. So it's really playing around with textures. You can go with something more simple, but I just wanted to show like what you can do, the possibilities, Alice in Wonderland, gnomes, nature. <laughs> you can do their possibilities here like are endless. You can do a lot of things and you'll have like a pretty nice, I did that myself piece of decor in an, in an office, in your work area, your workstation. Let's add in some more neon here. All right. And you can even make it beach theme if, if that's what you like, where if you're super good at painting or, or something, just put blue, your waves, and then put some, you can do that, you know, the Mod Podge on, put sand on it, and then uh, get the sand on it that emulates your beach, your shoreline, and then put some moss around. Oh, maybe that could be like the next project, honestly. That's so nice. I love being by the water, especially like in Philippines, an archipelago of islands. <laughs> like everywhere you go, like it's, it's, it's fish everywhere, fish. Okay. There you go. So we're, we're almost, we're, we're getting there now. I do see a little bit of space there that I'm going to cover up a little bit, maybe with, now I want to add this because I already added that. So I want it to be a bit consistent. And you, and when you're working on this, you don't have to like, uh, if, if you would like to copy what I'm doing, I'm sure that these pictures will be posted on um, uh, somewhere, I believe, uh, social media or things like that, that you can refer to. And of course, this is being recorded, so I'm sure you can refer to this process again. There you go. And there you go. I'm so happy I have this light. I bought this light for this session. <laughs> and it's working so well. I know how spotlight people feel now. It is warm. It is quite warm under these lights. <laughs> But I guess it's like, hey, it's summer, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, so now we have that. Just gonna remove the cobwebs here a bit. Maybe use that for some kind of like mini miniature uh, piece that I can use for later on. Let's see. Hmm. 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 Okay. No, I can definitely add something purple here. Really? Oh, good. 
glue gun stick really quickly. Just add that in there. Yeah, you can also, it sort of like, looks like you can make a mini bonsai too. So let me just wipe some of these away. And we have a mossy frame. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. See? And if I can, oh, true. There you go. There you go. Put it under the light. Look at that. It's coming together, isn't it? Right? Isn't that cool? So now I can add some, some more details. So this one is dry now. So I have, oh, I can use a marker. <laughs> why make it, why make it a little bit like hard on myself? I can use a marker for this for now. I'm just gonna do uh, maybe just like, like really straggly lines for a door. Wow, that's pretty cool and translucent, but that really works. Just really straggly lines and it's starting to look like a door, isn't it? You tell me, I don't know. I'm doing this for the first time because I'm like, why not? I'd say it does look like a door for sure. Perfect. Little, little portal. It looks like a little portal, doesn't it? Yes. And I can add a little, maybe a little, uh, and you can actually paint a window on top too if you wanted. That would look really cute, right? If you just had like some blue paint or something and paint a little window. But for now, I'm going to add a... Um, I'm going to add a door here for uh, a little knob here for now for my left handed folks. <laughs> there you go. There's a little door here for now. And uh, or if you wanted like, uh, if you wanted to keep this open and just put a photo in there that works too, right. So now we're going to get into some of the design parts of it. And I'm going to prop it like this. So I think Daniel can share the spotlight on ooh, ooh. actually, let me see if I can just shift this like that i guess that's fine that'll that, that'll do and hopefully the laptop won't fall but i will be very careful so now that you have this view just gonna put the light there more hopefully the view is good but that looks pretty cool so far so now what i'm gonna do is i have these little birds over here right here and uh maybe i'll put in like a this color, because it's a similar color to that one, and it sort of pops out of the green, so why not? And let's see like how I want to position it like this. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> let's do this. Glue in there and adding in there. And if you had like some little mini eggs, you can also throw that like in there. That would be so cute. Now we have a bird. We <laughs> We have a bird and the things are coming together. And I do have this, uh, I can add the plant a little later. I do have some rocks that we can use over here. Let's see, let's see, I'm gonna tilt this so I can see it a little. We can put rocks over here. That's gonna look really cool. Glue on the rock, gluing on the rock and working fast because rocks are cold. Rocks are cold, working fast. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> I think it's gonna fall off because I glued it on the moss without thinking much. Oh no, okay, we're, we're good, we're safe. It worked everyone. And you know what's gonna be really cute too? Because this is like a miniature, like little world. You know, like those stones that you paint in the garden, you can paint that rock and make it like a mini garden rock that you would paint. That's so cute, right? So there are many ideas that you can do that to, to add some personal touches. Maybe I will do that. And now, Hmm, this one's nice and it'll pop out from, from the red here or purple. And I'm gonna put that on top, right here. On top of the frame, because why not? Isn't that cute? It's on the frame. I, maybe like the birds could like do it, look in other directions. The right now they're just like, <laughs> they're just looking like this, but then, you know, you have like, if you have like other mini decorations, I'm sure you can, you can like play around with it a lot. All right, so I have this little acorn. And where can I put the acorn that would be really cute? Maybe on top here. Oh, I'm going to do that. It's like a mini acorn mushroom tree, which doesn't make sense, but it makes sense to us, right? <laughs> Anything is possible with this. There you go. That's that. And now, or it could be like a mini, 
hat. Like it's like a hat. Oh, let me just stick that on there because it's gonna fall down. All right, and now we have this flat ledge. So I usually don't like putting us uh, gluing on crystals because I like you using them for other pieces. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, uh, that's gonna look nice right there, isn't it? Or maybe on top even, or let's put something here because this one was feeling lonely. I like how that looks or nestled into the grass here or something like that. Yeah, I think I like it there. So I'm gonna do that actually. You can even just leave it on top. <laughs> you can also just like leave it on top if you'd like and that looks nice if you want to reuse it for another project because I know like hot glue gun can be messy so I'll just leave it on top for now and you have your little crystals where's my little quartz clear crystals you can put on top if you like there you go right it's looking pretty good it looks like a mini mushroom world naturey reminds you of things that are green <laughs> and textured. So now we have the other piece that's remaining. And ah, this is a really cool looking plant that I, I'm so proud of, I grew it myself. But I'm going to, we have this little, little thing here. I'm gonna put that in. Yay, <laughs> isn't that cute? Look at that, I'm so proud of this. I'm so proud of this. Oh, I did not glue that, true. I did, not, I did not glue that one. But look at that. And now you have a hanging mossy fairyland, right? <laughs> I hope everybody enjoyed. We made it in just sort of under an hour and it was just all experimenting and me not following the plan that I initially had, except for the door. But um, yeah, maybe I'll glue these in later, but you know, you can do so many things. I hope you, everybody liked it. Look at that. Thank you. Jeanette, that was so incredible. You made that look so easy too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, oh, I'm just stick this here, stick this here. Oh, look. It's, a process. it's very experimental. <laughs> I, I hear you. And uh, I, I think I, I was certainly feeling that from you. It's like, oh, let me just try this thing. Let me just, and you know what? I'm sure they don't always all work. No, but, not all the time. Um, you know what i think that's the way it is with art sometimes we make things that we don't necessarily love but the process informs our next creative decision towards something that we do love and i think your practice definitely comes through because you 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 know you've been it's not your first frame so but you do make it look easy and your enthusiasm is is wonderfully infectious we've had some comments from cone johnson in the chat very fun thank you leslie says love it ivanka says amazing thanks for bringing us to fairyland Reem said, yeah, <laughs> amazing. I love the result. Uh, Demi said, it's a Hobbit burrow. Yes, it does look like it. <laughs> Demi also said, bonsai, great idea. Uh, maybe I will try to do a tree of life. So yes, there's beautiful. Some inspiration coming. Christina says, this is so great. I wanted to share uh, just for a moment here as well, uh, some of Jeanette's other creations. She was referencing the Mickey Mouse one. Is this the one you were talking about? Yep, here? that's the Mickey Mouse one that I did for a friend. <laughs> yeah, so you can get all kinds of creative. Are these paint specs like? Yeah, that you did I here? just yeah. use I just use like a like a like a paint, and I just like threw <laughs> threw it on like threw it on the canvas just to add some texture and really have fun with it. And you can see in over there, like I just traced the outline, a really loose outline, and I just sort of pasted everything in the line and trimmed the areas where it was curved. And I just followed like sort of the color, but the more you add on, the more it starts to look like a picture. It might not look like much at all in the beginning because it's incomplete, right? Like when you, when you start off in the be beginning, it's not meant to look polished in any way, shape or form. So, but that was pretty much me really experimenting on um, let's just keep going. And even if it's sort of done, like that's the thing about art, you don't know when it's done. <laughs> but here are many examples of what you can do with a moss frame, like that one too. That one, I bought that from uh, Tara, Tara Gardens and uh, this deer head for only 10 bucks because it was on sale. And then I actually just like pasted a bunch of like the moss in there. And I used these wood chip discs to really hold on to like some of the little crystals. And you can see I have a little door there too. I'm just really fascinated with like with miniatures and, and mystical things everywhere like I, it's just fun it's just super fun, but there's so many ideas that you can uh, that you can do and, and Google up as well and yeah, these are all like just sort of my plant 
plant uh, love for plants now. <laughs> if you do want to follow Jeanette and see some of her creations, the, this one I think is more plant uh, yep. based. I think, but have, uh, I think uh, you also have uh, another page as well, right? Yep, another page was just like a genetogram where I post a lot of like park stuff and family stuff. But if you want to follow my plant journey and see some of the collection of like some of the plants I have, there's plant cadabra or some of my other art, like making a house uh, that's on genetogram. And I also have those those miniatures that I made, miniature shelves, if you'd like to take a look at that. So cool. So cool. Thank you so much, Jeanette. I'm curious, did anybody participate with us today? Was anybody building anything? Show, show us yeah, what you have. Oh yeah, we would love to see anybody that's been participating. In case there's a photo. Now, for full disclosure, I didn't have my glue gun. I think my daughter has borrowed it indefinitely. <laughs> uh, and I didn't have moss. So I just went to my balcony and took pieces of things I have out there. <laughs> I don't want it to. <gasps> Wow. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Yeah. Wow, that's really creative. I really like what you did with the things. Oh, that you did. And that looks like a you. beautiful result. Thank you. And it's mostly edibles. Um, my lettuces, kale, different uh, basils, green and purple. Wow. So mostly my edibles are in there and then my seeds. I save my own seeds every year and I give them to people and sometimes I have way too many. So I've used my own leftover lettuce seeds. And that's one, what a wonderful way to sort of like imprint that into an artwork, right? Like really, really good job. Thank you. Thank you. Who else has some artwork? I see some cameras. Can you, can you guys hear me? <gasps> oh, hello. Oh, hey, Jeanette. Hi, <laughs> I also just want to say the Thank Mickey you. Mouse piece you guys were showing earlier, that's what she made for my birthday. Yes, I made that a couple of years birthday. ago. <laughs> yeah, it's actually it's actually hanging on my uh, on my wall in my like office area. Yeah, um, they make one. Yes. yes. So this is what I made. Wow. Or, yeah. So I took I, I, I actually went to Michael's this morning and I was just like wandering through their like summer seasonals collection right, right. And, and it's all on sale by the way for like 40 to 50 percent off um so that's where I got like so like, these are just fake succulents um but like these were like two dollars at the Michael's like these tiny ones so like I like there's a I there's like a group of tiny succulents that I got so I'll probably glue on a little bit more but yeah, yeah. This is what that I was made. A beautiful great job and and you know the succulents really pop from that frame you used really yeah well I'm yeah. so happy everyone's doing such great work <laughs> oh yeah no thanks Jeanette for leading this oh no problem <laughs> like I, I was like you can see me just like sort of not following the plans here <laughs> <laughs> yeah well let's see let's see who else has some uh, some artwork to show like maybe we can do like a little picture op and and have everyone show their artwork on screen we've got carol here who looks like she's just about ready to share oh, let's do this. you're muted though carol if you want to be speaking we can't hear you there you go can you oh hear there me? you go yeah. yeah so hi and for some reason i'm i i can't see myself can you guys see me Oh, we can see you. Yeah. Okay, because I can't see myself for some reason. I'm having a little trouble. But anyway, uh, this is mine. It's like a little. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's not dried yet. It looks really hazy to me. Is it hazy to you? Well, yeah. I, we can still see the artwork come through, and it looks beautiful. It's just like you have some trees in there. Yeah. Like good rocks, and then the door, very good door. I mean, it's certainly like a little, little path really in mine. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to uh, what to do with the white background behind the tree, because I don't want to do moss. I want to do something that looks well. Good. Maybe you can paint it so, into a blue, turn it into a sky. Oh, I like that idea. That's what I'm going to do. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> no problem, <laughs> anytime. But that looks really beautiful. I love how it looks like a picture in a frame for sure. It's like looking at looking outside the window or something. Great Thank job. You. Thank you. You did a nice job. Thanks a lot. Thank you means a lot to me thank you thank you for sharing that carol so it's so nice when uh, people share their works at the end too that's uh, really hard work 
<laughs> yeah, and, and everyone did such a great job. And here I am sort of just like talking and I wasn't, I was I didn't really have like a, a visual into what everyone else is doing, but I'm so, so happy that there are a couple of folks here that, that took, that just went with it, tried and you, you, I, you should be very proud of yourself. It's something, um, something that that's quite new, I'm thinking, but I'm really pleased with what everyone's made. You all did such a great job. Thank you. <laughs> You've been a wonderful uh, instructor, Jeanette. Uh, really uh, your time and coming to share your, your skills and expertise with us and uh, just your, your spirit of enthusiasm, which uh, is wonderful. My uh, pleasure. Yeah, even like all, all your different artwork. We didn't have a chance to show your macrame artworks, but you have some like feather macrame artwork that is also incredibly beautiful. Can I share one of those? Is that okay? For sure, for sure you can. I saw Caroline think, oh, that looks interesting. So let me let me share one because they're, they're so funny too. Um, I met Jeanette um, through the music festival. She also fronts a rock band and like with the most beautiful voice too, like as a performer, like so multi talented. It's pretty incredible. Um, I will share the screen and show you these macrame artworks too. Look at these ones here. Wow. Yeah, so oh yeah. Cool. Those are some of like the macrame works that I've done. And of course, like a lot of them, I, uh, I, I, I haven't been doing macrame for a long time. I haven't been doing mossy artwork for a long time. I made, uh, I think that was probably the very first leaf I ever did for that. And, and you know, it's really just following patterns off YouTube and uh, and really just see and I just Google how do you make this and then I try and sometimes it, it takes longer in the beginning but once you start to just keep doing it maybe by three or four leaves you'll be a total pro you'll be able to do it really quickly right away. Cool. Okay we have hit our two o'clock um, mark here are there any other questions from the chat or anybody who wants to share? Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> take that as a no. Uh, but maybe you. Daniel, we could do a, a photo with everybody if they're okay of showing their artwork. Yeah, I would love that. I'm, I know they're, they might be a bit awkward if they're dry, Caroline. I don't know if you're, you're gonna be able to do that with us, but uh, it would be great. Yeah, anybody who's try and get it in five, four, three, two, one. Amazing, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. It has been an absolute pleasure. So proud of everybody. I think you should all be super proud of the things that you created today. And this is just the beginning. You can make another one. You can make one for a, for a friend as gifts. And it, it's just the start. You can, you can do many things with it. So hope you keep making stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.